Hey everybody, today is freezer mail day. I have made a list of freezer meals that I want to prepare and get in our freezer to make our lives a lot easier in the next several weeks. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I have never been a huge freezer meal person. The last freezer meal video I did, I only accomplished about half of what I had planned to accomplish, but I filled pretty much my whole day. But what I found is we have really enjoyed having those meals ready to go and give us really quite a few different options on things to eat that a lot of the work was already done. So I have not given up on freezer meals. I plan to continue doing this, but I want to try to make the process easier for me and still give us those freezer meals. So I need to find a way to balance out the work it takes to do freezer meals with the right recipes to use. I don't wanna spend my entire day doing this. In fact, I got a little bit of a late start today. Freezer meals have the potential to save you a lot of time, to allow you to eat really good, delicious, healthy home cooked meals, but not have to do all that preparation right before eating it. But if you're spending so much time preparing them in one big chunk, that can be kind of a drag, it can be stressful. So here is the list for the day. This is gonna be a mixture of things that are more breakfast oriented and things that are more dinner oriented. We eat these breakfast foods any time of day. So I wanna make up some French toast and breakfast sandwiches. These will be English muffin breakfast sandwiches. I wanna make some bran muffins, just some more simple muffins. A green lentil curry green chicken enchiladas. Oh wait, the green lentil curry, that's actually gonna be a red curry because the grocery store did not have the green curry, so we're gonna do red. Green chicken enchiladas, we're gonna make two shepherd's pies. One of them is gonna be for our dinner tonight. I'm going to make a barbacoa beef. We're gonna marinate some raw chicken and then just put it in the freezer raw, and then we're also gonna make some Italian meatballs. So I was going to start out with our breakfast foods, but I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and address all of the ground meat and the roast. So the first thing I'm gonna get going is the barbacoa beef because this is gonna cook for at least 90 minutes. Then it's gonna have to cool down. I've got some of my home canned beef broth. I'm gonna put a little bit in the bottom. So this is just a regular beef roast. It's probably three, between three and four pounds, which I think is gonna be the perfect size for this recipe. This recipe calls for fresh garlic, and I am not gonna use fresh garlic in this recipe. We're gonna be using garlic in a few other recipes today, and I'll chop that fresh, but for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and use garlic powder form. I've never used these chilies in adobo sauce before, but I've heard really good things about it. They're a little spicy, and I don't handle spice very well and I'm not sure my kids will handle that intensive spice really really well either. If you've ever seen me taste spice, it, I just can, it takes me a while to recover from it. So even though it calls for three, I'm gonna put in one and we'll just call that good. The bay leaf will go right into the instant pot. It calls for three, so that means I'm gonna put in six, I guess seven. I know barbacoa beef often calls for cloves and I swore I had some, but apparently I do not. You know what? Let me check one more place. The cloves have been found. So I'm really glad about this. Every recipe that I've come across for rubber co beef calls for cloves. So I figure it's kind of an important one. This says ground cloves. I think I'm just going to put in a handful that aren't ground. And I think that that flavor will come out really nicely. All right. I was thinking I was going to have to maybe boost the flavor with some of the other spices that are already in it because I didn't have the cloves, but I, I do. So I, I should be okay. The adobo sauce has a smoky smell to it. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of smoked salt as well. I think that will be really yummy. I'm gonna let this go for an hour and a half. I'm gonna tuck it over on a different counter because this is premium counter space in my little kitchen. There's a lot of these in here. There's a lot of Chipotle's in here. So what I'm gonna do is freeze these flat on a piece of parchment paper and then put them in a bag so that when I wanna use these, I can just pull out one at a time. I think one is gonna be plenty, plenty spicy. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is get the meat browning for the shepherd's pie. I really like lamb in shepherd's pie. 
but I find that I like to cut it with beef. So it's sort of like a shepherd pie, cottage pie hybrid. As I have time, I'm gonna start to mix up our meatballs. I do a bunch of research on several different recipes and then sort of do some combination based on what I think we'll like best. Um, or if I find one that I think is closely related to the one we like best, I'll use that as my guideline and then just go from there. But for this, I know generally what I'm gonna put in it and I'll just kind of go with the seasonings that I feel like the amounts that I think would be good. I like a really good saucy shepherd's pie. So that's what I'm gonna kind of go for. finish peeling the potatoes, get those cut up, get them boiled, and then we'll make our mashed potatoes. Okay, we got all of those meatballs on one pan. Some of them got a little big, but that's okay. I think as long as they're all relatively the same size, Couple big ones over here, but they're on the edge. So we'll get these baking. I'm gonna start a timer for 25 minutes and see how they are at that point. All right, our meatballs are looking pretty darn good. Just taking a little peek. I bet they are pretty much done. I'm gonna poke one and check the temperature. And then we can get those out and cooling down. I'm just gonna store these in a reusable silicone bag in the freezer and we can use them for lots of different things. These meatballs are more than done. So I'm gonna get them off the pan so that they don't continue cooking and we'll get these cooled down. Now with the meatballs, I imagine we can do something like a classic meatball, spaghetti meatballs, but you can also use these meatballs in like a gravy and make like a Swedish meatball or something like that. This, even though there's the Italian seasonings in here, I feel like it's versatile enough to where you could use these meatballs in lots of different recipes in lots of different ways. You could even do like a, like a teriyaki meatball with them at this point. Okay, we've got those meatballs in the back porch cooling down. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos where I cool things off in our back porch, it's just been so nice to be able to do over the course of the winter, but things are starting to warm up, so I'm not gonna be able to rely on that too much longer. In fact, today we're supposed to get up to about 45, 50 degrees. So I need to be a little bit more careful using that. I can use it as an initial cool down, but then I can't count on it much, much longer after that. But having those meatballs being versatile, I think is part of what is going to make freezer meals and preparing things and then putting it in the freezer work better for our family. Just having that versatility. I think that there's a lot of benefit in having a meal completely done, but if not all the meals are done that way, you have options. And I think it also helps on the preparation day like today. In a small kitchen like mine too, I think part of what is gonna help to make major meal preparation days work a lot better and go a lot smoother and be a lot more fun, less overwhelming, is by taking things in batches. So we've got the beef in the Instant Pot, we're doing the shepherd's pie, and then we're also doing the meatballs. And so once those are pretty well winding down, I'm gonna do a little clean job and clear things out so that we don't have too much kind of cluttering up our kitchen and too much going on at one time. There's, it's definitely helpful and major time savings to have multiple things going at once, but if there's too much going, then that's when you get into trouble. Another thing to think about when you're preparing freezer meals is thinking about what containers you have or what you would like to store these in. I have really not wanted to store anything in single use containers. So that's been a really big goal of mine. So I've been kind of checking Goodwill and keeping my eye out for glass containers, especially ones that have lids. Last time I went, I found two that had these lids, which is fantastic. So I try to stay away from the single use things and I want to balance out what I've got on hand with what I can fill. So this one on the right here is the one nine by 13 that I keep up in my kitchen. 
and that we just kind of continue to use on a regular basis. So this is the one for tonight. And then the one on the left is going to go in the freezer because it's got the lid. Okay, one thing that has been so quiet and patiently waiting for us is the roast. The roast has been, well, it's unplugged now, but it has been um, pressure released for about a half an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's take a look at this. It looks so good. It's fallen away from the bone. I'm gonna cool this down completely. And then once the juices are cooled down as well, I'm gonna skim off that fat layer and then add the juices and the meat back together and we will freeze it up as one with the juice. So it's a really nice juicy meat to use for barbacoa tacos. I've done a round of dishes and I'm ready to shift gears into more of those breakfast foods. I'm going to go ahead and mix up the eggs for the breakfast sandwiches in my Vitamix. And if you're doing a bunch of eggs these are amazing. It cuts through all of those membranes and those whites that otherwise don't get mixed up that easily. It cuts through them in less than five seconds. You can have an entire container completely, completely mixed together. So I'm gonna actually mix up my eggs, milk, a little salt, maybe a pinch of garlic powder in here. And then I'm going to lay out a little bit of bacon. We made some bacon this past week in a few different meals and I reserved just a little bit specifically for these sandwiches because just that little bit of bacon adds a nice flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this pan, lay out my bacon, and then I have some pre-cooked crumbled ground chicken. Now I, you can use any kind of thick, any kind of thing that you want in here. It doesn't even have to have meat. It can be packed with vegetables, but I was actually going to make these a couple of weeks ago, and so I got the chicken for it, but I never ended up making it. I wanted to make sure that the meat uh, got cooked up. So I cooked up the meat already, and it's just been sitting in my fridge, my freezer, waiting for today. was real-time mixing so that is so quick. I wish I had homegrown eggs for this but we just have four chickens and they're all bantam so the, the eggs that they do lay are small but it is spring which apparently is the time when chickens lay the most so even though we get two to four eggs per day it's not enough to quite build up enough based on how many eggs we eat. Now there's 18 in here I'm gonna be making 24 sandwiches so even though it's a lot of eggs this is really gonna spread out to a lot. in a town that has a chicken ordinance or maybe doesn't have a chicken ordinance I called our city hall recently we are only able to have five chickens within the city limits and while that's great I find that for our family that ends up not really being that many eggs because not only do chicks take about six months until they start laying but then after about a year and a half or two years their production then goes down and then you have these chickens that have become your pets and what to do with them. Of course we want to keep them around because they're more of a pet. And so I called our city hall just to see if there was anything that I could do as a resident to try to increase that limit because I know some other areas have a higher level, whether a higher limit on the chickens, whether it's seven, eight, or even 10. And so they heard me out, checked with animal control, they had no problem. So it's actually gonna go up for approval or denial at a city council meeting at the end of this month. So that would be really exciting to see if we can have a few more chickens in town. So if you're ever wondering about stuff like that, just go ahead and give your city a call. You never know what can happen. Oh wow, these just came right apart. I was just about to say the last time I did these, it said to open them up with a fork, but they just look totally mangled. 
So this time I was prepared with my knife from the beginning. These are opening so much nicer than the other ones I've done. I'm just gonna lightly toast these in the oven. Now these English muffins come in these trays which are recyclable and then there's a bag on the outside and I'm gonna reuse these bags. This is the one part of my freezing reel today where I'm not using a reusable item or at least we won't reuse them. I'm gonna wrap these in tin foil to go into the freezer. I do have some beeswax wraps that I would like to try wrapping some of these in, maybe a paper towel first because they go in a microwave with a paper towel on them. And then maybe the beeswax wrap on top of that. But for now, I'm gonna use tin foil and I'm gonna reuse those plastic bags. All of these sandwiches put together will probably last four separate meals for our family. We like to grab these and go. We've kind of entered a um, sports season and so they're nice to grab for a protein boost and some energy for that. So I'm gonna get this in and toast these. Once these are nice and toasted, I'm gonna go ahead and do this with the other ones. And by the time that's done, our eggs should be done. We can cut them up and assemble these sandwiches. eggs in here with some milk. I'm going to add a pinch of salt, some cinnamon, and a little vanilla. This is going to be our batter for the French toast. The muffins are done. They look great. They can go ahead and cool down now. And we are completely done with the oven for the day. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Here is the cooked egg. It's a nice flat sheet. I'll just go ahead and get it sliced up. And I have in my head worked out where I can go six this way, four this way, and that'll give me 24 squares. change gears on that French toast. I do not think it's a good idea to sit there and pan cook French toast. I've been burning it because I'm trying to juggle. I think I need to make sure that things that I'm doing I can easily multitask with instead of standing there kind of just doing one thing. So I cooked up probably half a dozen and then I made this little pan of what I'm going to call a French toast casserole. I don't even know how this is how you make it. I just sprayed a little bit of oil in the pan, put, just cut up a bunch of bread, and then poured the rest of the batter right on top. And I'm going to bake it tomorrow morning for breakfast. I'm not going to use it as a freezer meal. I'm going to nix that from our plan. Now, why I originally wanted to do French toast is because I wanted something that was easy for the kids to grab and they can kind of do their own breakfast. We make homemade granola so that they can do it with that. And I was just thinking of one other thing that they can do on their own. Originally, I was thinking waffles, but I'm really picky about waffle irons because I don't want any kind of chemicals from that nonstick coating. And I'm just, it's just, there's just a lot of information out there and it's hard to wade through. So I'm still in the process of doing that. I tried getting a cast iron waffle iron and I don't know if I didn't do it right, but the waffles did not turn out. So French toast was kind of my next attempt, but I'm gonna have to keep searching. It's maybe gonna go back to waffles, but we'll see how it goes. But for now, I'm gonna make sure that French toast is not on my freezer meal list. I'm just gonna go ahead and get all of these sandwiches wrapped up and make sure that everything is in a good spot to just kind of sit while we go through my last two meals. We're gonna make 
two pans of enchiladas, three batches of a curry sauce, and then two packages of marinated chicken legs. I'm gonna go ahead and do my curry first, and then the chicken, and then the enchiladas. For the curry, this is a recipe that typically calls for using lentils. Now, you can use lentils, I've got plenty, but I also have chicken that's frozen in the freezer, already cooked and shredded. So this is one of those things that I have strategically chosen to do just the sauce portion so that it, number one, takes up less space in my freezer, and number two, allows it to be more flexible and versatile for making, whether I wanna use lentils or chicken, depending on what we have and what we feel like eating. The first thing I'm gonna do is just get my shallots and garlic chopped up, and then we'll go ahead and get these things seasoned and build up this sauce. Now, this curry recipe calls for coconut milk. I'm not going to add the coconut milk. I'm just gonna keep these on our shelf. There's no sense in opening this and filling up my jar with the coconut milk just to take up more space in the freezer when I can just leave that on the shelf. And it's fine to just be shelf stable. So I will just jar up this sauce and it might only take a half pint jar. We'll, we'll just have to see how much, but it's not gonna end up being that much, but it's gonna be a really good flavor. It will be super good and concentrated. Normally I would also pre-make some rice. I do already have some pre-made rice in our freezer. And so I'm not gonna worry about rice today. Shallots are one of the things that I am gonna try growing for the first time this year. Never grown them, and I'm not going to start them from seed either. Maybe that's a mistake, but I'm just gonna buy the shallot bulbs and plant those. As I go through and make my freezer meals, there's a couple different things that I keep trying to think about. It's how can I be most efficient? How can I figure out how much of this stuff I can grow on my own? and how I can reduce waste. So I've talked a little bit about how I can reduce waste by using a lot of reusable containers, which I feel really good about. Um, also, my tin foil is 100% recycled, which is, I think, a good thing too. As far as growing my own things, I just would like to be able to not rely on buying all these canned goods. And some of these things, I, I think a lot I think a lot of these things I don't need to be reliant on. When I take a look at the counter here, okay, this this is the enchilada stuff. This chicken, I've literally never had canned chicken in my house ever until now. So I'm actually gonna use this in the enchilada recipe and get it out of here. These green chilies, I can grow peppers and canned peppers enchilada sauce. I've made my own enchilada sauce before, so I know I don't need to buy it. Salsa Verde. I'm growing tomatillos this summer so that I can make my own salsa verde, which you can also use using green tomatoes too. So that takes care of a lot of that. Onions, garlic, those kinds of things are all things that I could absolutely just replace with my own things. If I saved up our chicken eggs, and if we're able to have more chickens in our city, I would have an easier time saving up eggs and utilizing those in the recipes. For freezer meals, oftentimes I do Italian dishes. I can make my own sauce, which is a huge component to those types of dishes. Another thing that I think is important to mention is I took a little bit of a break before starting this last sort of series of meals. And I had the tendency to really just push through and ignore whether I'm getting tired or I'm hungry and things like that. And sometimes that's not a good thing. It can make it can make an experience not as good. So whenever you're making a big meal preparation day to make sure that you're taking time to check in and make sure that you're not exhausting yourself because planning freezer meals and making them is a lot of fun and just like just like anything that it can take a toll. And that's one of the reasons why I had mentioned I always try to make sure now that I plan our dinner. All right, let's get this pan heated up. The reason that I want to do this on the pan and not just throw it all together and freeze it is because I want the flavor of this to be exposed to some higher heat and just to get really nice and aromatic. Also, a lot of these Indian spices, from what I know, require some pretty high heat as well 
to fully bloom that flavor. So if I were to just throw this all in a container and plan to put it in my Instant Pot all together, we wouldn't quite get that depth of flavor that these spices and seasonings typically offer when they go through that process that they like to go through in order to bring out the most of their flavor. I'm tripling this recipe so we basically have three meals to make out of this base. Wow, you guys, these seasonings already smell so incredible. I just got this into a low simmer, so I'm gonna pull it off. And as I'm kind of stirring and thinking about this, I am going to divide this out into two servings. That is going to be some delicious, delicious curry. And then when you get the coconut milk in there and it makes it all milky and creamy, it is so good. And that's a really good amount. I could even thin that with some more water. Probably it's very concentrated. Water or broth when I make it, depending on how, how we want it. Now, I really wanted to make some kind of chicken marinade. I did this recently, not in the last freezer video, but I have done some freezer marinated chicken that's just raw frozen and even though it, you're not doing any cooking right now having that marinade already pre-made when I'm already in the kitchen doing other things is really helpful and so when you want that chicken all you can do is take it out a day or so in advance and as it heats up it's already doing the marinating process I did use some of this marinated chicken in a video that I recently did a meal stacking video and it worked really well. It was actually still partially frozen, but because I baked it, it thawed perfectly and was really good. Because I'm dealing with raw meat and I really have a thing about raw meat, especially raw chicken and poultry, I'm gonna use a plastic bag. Um, and I always feel like I need to disclaim that by saying that I really try not to, but I'm going to. And obviously I have all this, you know, single use packaging right here too. So. I feel a little weird about it and you know what scratch that i'm gonna try to marinate this in our glass containers let me see what i can find we've got a lot of spares right now so we're gonna do it in here hopefully hopefully the chicken fits i made a bunch of dog food for our dog and so that took up a few more of these we have probably like a dozen of these things we use them for everything we got the chicken in the glass jars. This one was, I did this one first and it was a little iffy, but I just, I just put them sort of, so they're like yin and yang fit together. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix together the marinade. It's gonna be olive oil, some mustard, a little bit of honey, and then I'll pour it over, kind of stir them around and get the lids on. The reason I was a little hesitant to do the silicone bags with this is because I don't really like to wash things by hand that have touched raw meat. And so these I can just put right in the dishwasher and I don't have to wash them by hand. So, and I like to wash those silicone bags by hand. The reason that I like these containers is because they really, they have this um, band in here that creates an airtight seal. So what I do when I'm marinating chicken in these, because I do sometimes do it just straight in the fridge, is I'll turn it upside down periodically and then right back, right side back up so that the top gets completely covered and marinated as well. The last thing we need to do is assemble our enchilada. The day of cooking is done and I feel really good about the things that we have. I feel like things were much more in balance than my first freezer video. I feel like I made a much more manageable list that I didn't have to cut down. We did make a change on the French toast, but that was not necessarily because of a time thing. So I've got two shepherd pie meals, the one with the lids going in the freezer. This one's going directly in the oven. So we've got 24 of the muffins, three of the barbacoa beef, 24 breakfast sandwiches. I don't even know how many meatballs I got. I think, what was that, five by maybe like 35, something like that. Two containers of marinated chicken, the French toast casserole, which I'm calling, that we'll have tomorrow morning. 
and then two pans of enchiladas. I forgot these were still cooling down in the other room. So that's two more meals of this curry dish that we will have either with lentils or chicken and rice. So that will actually give us 17 meals in the freezer, not including the French toast and the muffin. I really enjoyed having you along today making these freezer meals. If you enjoyed watching this process, please give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of what comes out of my kitchen, more gardening, food preservation videos, and things like that as well, please subscribe and we will see you soon.